What's up, John? Uh, not much. How's it going? Good. Good. Made it here. You did. Yeah. Busy. Busy. We're always busy. I think everybody's always busy, aren't they? Yeah. Lots going on. Yeah. Now that bear season's done, start gearing up for uh, elk. Yeah. Antelope. Right. Deer. Yeah. Whatever else we could find. Let's talk... Uh, Tag draws for Idaho came out. Yeah. And? I I got an antelope tag. I put in for sheep. So oh, that's right. All I was able to do, and I didn't draw that, but all I was able to get was, uh, well, balls. I mean, we'll I got a it. pocket full tag, you yeah, know, right. still, but um, I do that to an unlimited antelope tag. Right. And, um, so we'll get to do some antelope hunting. Tussie got it. So we'll yeah, Tussie out here, which we're excited about doing a podcast. Absolutely, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll just yeah. Ha- get get to hang out with them and do what? Get to hang out with them. Will be fun. Yeah. And, um, you know, do the. He's never killed an antelope with his bow, I don't believe. So it's... has he ever killed an antelope at all? Do you think? I don't think so. If I remember right, I don't think I, he did. I don't. Yeah, we'll Let's have to see. find out. That that'll be fun if it's his first one. So yeah, yeah. I talked to a few people. Drew some pretty cool tags, and then I think you drew a pretty good tag. I did. Yes, I drew a late season muzzleloader uh, mule deer tag, and I've drawn it before, and yeah. I've shot my biggest buck out of that unit. So which isn't huge the you just not that was a good solid buck man he is yeah. he's really nice and i was super stoked and it was a last day buck too which was super oh, cool so, nice well that, hopefully i can get out there with you i know that did you draw it with frank right yeah yeah so frank and i both drew that tag uh, if we, i can i'd get out there with him absolutely film some it's so much fun There's, frank's grandson drew a good buck tag yeah he drew his first mule deer tag so he's just this is his first year hunting so that'll be kind of fun we got some filming coming up too. we do yeah yeah hopefully we have some good hunts to film this year yeah yeah i know like uh elk for me you know i'm gonna do it i i'm kind of bound in, to prove that it can be done over wallow with a tree saddle yeah. and filming it i think i'm because solo you know solo elk hunting filming i gotta hand it to the guys that do it like you know the solo hunter guys right you know uh right remy yep. and tim i mean they get that done and that whole that self-filming stuff when you're moving it's one thing sitting in the blind one thing sitting in a tree stand exactly. but when you're moving it takes some um discipline right to get everything all your stuff set up and everything to film you know that absolutely and how many times have i've had the intentions packed a camera around blah right. blah blah and right. then Never did it because it's like it's, it, all of a sudden there it is. You so know? you're just packing that extra weight all day. Yeah, and... <laughs> absolutely. It's just it's a great thing. I might that, just that happened throw to me a last couple rocks. Year. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it is hard. Did and... you film your mule deer hunt your muzzleloader one last time? Um, no. <laughs> Was it the same story we were just talking about? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, I, I did film uh, a fair amount of it. Uh, I was there. I think seven or eight maybe even nine days and it was the last day of the season and i had given up on you know even finding a decent enough buck to take oh, a pop at and okay. and when i saw that buck it's like okay i am not messing around yeah i am just yeah i'm gonna do everything i can just to, to kill this bottom buck of the night 100 so i tapped out which yeah i've regretted that ever since honestly so could it have been i mean i there has been a couple hunts i remember one in nevada i actually had eastman's was it going to come out and film it and i uh i told him i only and i was supposed to have a whole bunch of time to hunt and i was literally only going to have a couple days um because i was leaving to go to work in alaska and so i told him don't come out because I don't want to waste their time and right. everything. And God, it'd have been the most perfect. I ended up killing the buck. <laughs> Second day, the last day I was going to get to hunt, and it was a good solid, you know, upper one seventies buck. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it would have been such perfect scenario for filming. Granted, you never know how it's going to turn out. Right. But they're rutting. Got some rutting. I, you know, watched them rut, and the buck that I end up shooting pushed a couple smaller bucks um right by me i kind of worked my way and, and cut them off 22 yards mm-hmm. i mean it would have been everything yeah. would have been so perfect for filming right 
but you know i mean yeah you just you just never know how you, you don't know and that's exactly what happened to me on, on that hunt was had i take my camera with me i was even solo oh. even solo i could have filmed it really yeah i just uh i had bumped that buck and he you know of course he was pushing a bunch of does and all this kind of stuff and they'd went down into these trees uh and that that hunt goes to when november november 14th oh yeah man. so they're yeah so they're awesome. yeah it's kind of fun too because I've, I've drawn that tag twice this is the third time actually and so it's t and I've, so I've got to know the area fairly good, yeah. and they'll, they'll rut in these same spots, and then those herds are in the same spots every day. So you literally just go from herd to herd, just checking to see if any new bucks had gotcha. moved in. And that's kind of what I kept doing. To the, and that's how this buck finally he showed up Shows the up. very last show day of the yeah. season. I had not seen him before that. So I, you know, I guided quite a bit in Nevada, and there was one particular hunt down in the Sheldon, and. The season, the way Nevada works, like the rifle, um, at least that hunt, you know, one year it'll it'll go to um, like the last day of the season, let's say, is November 1st. The next year, the last day of the season is November 2nd. Okay. And so until it, it peaks out, don't quote me on it, but maybe the 4th or 5th, something like that, and then it'll go back. Okay. Okay. Um, but that hunt is a lot like what you're saying there and every day is almost like a new totally new hunt exactly because you don't know what's going to show up and, right and right it's pretty cool it's like that super cool yeah as soon as you figure out where those herds are like they literally you know unless someone was to push them but yeah. there's only i think they cut the tags i think there's only 15 tags for this really? whole area yeah oh, wow and uh that's awesome you drew one of we drew, well we drew two of them yeah two, which is but super I mean, cool yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah i'm super stoked but excuse me but anyway they uh yeah that's uh that's basically what it is you just keep checking as soon as you figure out where those herds are at and there's some herds and i not i don't know if they're the same deer or not but they're like in the same spots they were the first time i drew the hunt they were there the, the second oh. time and i'll bet you there'll be there'll be deer in there again this time too. probably so it's pretty cool i mean and unless you can they're really them from quite a ways away so you're not bumping them or anything oh. like that you know so you can kind of judge from through your spotting scope to see if there's any new yeah new bucks in the area and you just leave them alone and unless somebody else bumps them they're going to be there every day yeah you know, I don't. I know that uh, one video you edited uh, that opportunity where I shot a bull that yeah. I had missed the year before, and the first thing that that kind of triggered maybe the same bull. There was a collared cow the year before, okay, which you don't see a lot of. Sure, I, I, that's only in the wild. Personally, I think I've only seen two. Right, but I saw that collared cow, and the first thing I told my nephew and my buddy that was with me, I, I was like. Um, there's that collared cow. And I says, I wonder if that same bull is with him that was with him last year. Mm -hmm. And and when the bull bugle, I heard the bugle, I knew it was a, the bull had a really unique bugle, if you gotcha. remember. yeah. And so, yeah, so the, I bet there's no reason for them not to. That's what their life. Yeah, right. Yeah. So anyway, I yeah, I'm so excited That's about cool. that. And, you know, I took, I've got 10 days to, Oh, I'll be there wow. for 10 days, so I'm going to nice. take my time. And I've always said I'm not a trophy hunter, but when I get an opportunity to shoot a nice buck, then I'm going to you know do everything I can. I mean, and a hunt I, like that in the rut, so few tags, right. so the pressure's down, and you got the time. Right. I, I yeah. <laughs> there was a guy I knew that years ago that uh, – no, he drew an awesome bull tag, like – uh, September 25th in the rut rifle. rifle tag. Yes, that would be sweet. And he took 12 days off to hunt. Mm -hmm. Nothing against him at all. Don't get me wrong. Right. But he shot a little tiny bull the oh. first morning. Waited for it to get light enough to shoot. Seriously? Like, yeah. Oh, my and I'm goodness. Like, I'm like, uh, and, and so my question was, and, and like I said, I'm not putting him down at all because, you know, to who, who each zone, but sure. it's like, why would you put in for a... a Right, a prime rut hunt. If all you're really after is meat, right. and that's what I told him. I was like, "Why'd you shoot that bull?" You know, I'm curiosity. I yeah. figured, thought you would be holding off. He goes, "Well, I really like the meat, and that's awesome. Absolutely, that's great. You bet." But I mean, if I just wanted meat and that's it, right? I'd shoot a cow. Right, get a cow hunt. Exactly. You know, yeah. And, and I would save the 
the um, that rut hunt for I wanted a big bull. Like, exactly. And yeah. there was great bulls in that unit. Yeah. And then, you know, he, he he was a little bummed after he did it, but I think I don't know. Sometimes I think people get tags, premier tags, and they're so worried about missing the opportunity, thinking they're not gonna get another chance. Like a perfect example is guys who draw draw like sheep, goat, and moose, and they're avid bow hunters. And they take their gun with them, too. And the first opportunity they get, they put their bow away and shoot at the rifle. And there's nothing against that right, at all. Right, But you understand what I'm saying? I it's do. Like, yeah. It's like, um, A, there again, you know, sheep and goat and moose, they don't get a ton of pressure because there's so few tags. Right, exactly. Um, I Like my goat hunt, and I'm not saying I'm by no means at all the greatest hunter, by no means at all, but... I know me too, yeah. and I could see them getting um, trigger happy, for lack of better words. Right. So I didn't take a gun. I just I didn't even take a gun. Yeah, that's that's the only way you probably would not decide to use a gun. Yeah, not, not, yeah. not you in, in particular, yeah, but yeah. anybody. Yeah, you know it, it, it would be hard not to, you yeah. know. But but so you got to have, and that's I told myself I'm not even gonna take a gun. Right. Uh, I've seen it happen too many times. And, and nothing against them for not shooting it with their bow, but um, I just wanted. To, if you're, you're around them enough, you've probably been around enough sheep and enough goats and enough moose that they're not as skittish. No, they can be right, but um, they're not as skittish because there's just so so little pressure. Exactly. I knew I could get it, and I guess confidence, not arrogance or anything like that it was confidence it's like i know i could get it. other people have done it with a bow i know i can get it done with a bow. right exactly and, yeah yeah but yeah i'd be the rifle hunter <laughs> and nothing against that <laughs> nothing against that at all i'll film it man anytime yeah, there you, go. There you, you go. know but but so. uh yeah but yeah so super stoked about that tag um and then of course we'll just be doing the antelope, over the counter and yeah, okay. yeah yeah antelope i did draw the unlimited antelope like we always do, which yeah. is exciting. Yeah. That's such a fun hunt. It is. I can't wait. It is. Hopefully, it's yeah. a good year out there. Yeah. We hope. Should and be. And then archery, archery elk. Yeah. Yeah. So, that'll be fun, too. Yeah. Always. Time to start doing some scouting for that. Yeah. It's hard that you don't really have to scout. Like, that deer hunt, you can't really scout it. Yeah. Because that time of the year, it changes so much. Yeah. So. As long as you, and I already know the area, so I don't yeah. need to. I'll, I'll probably go bounce around a little bit, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time down there beforehand just because it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to start putting some trail cameras up, like says, for elk just because. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to. Yeah, try that. On a different, uh, on a different way. Right. And so I do want to kind of see what's going on there. Yeah. So do you already have an idea where you're? Oh yeah, the wallow. Yeah, I got wallow. a couple of wallows, different wallows, and one of them is probably three mile hike. Okay. And and I've seen a really good bull in there a couple times, and so I kind of leaning more towards that, I think. Okay. Um, because I don't think a ton of people know about that wallow. Cool. Or wallow. It's it's a wallowy area, so that's what it's going to take. Because I'm going to have to go up and do some scouting and right. put some trail cameras up to see okay. um, uh, where they're actually if they hit one spot more than another. But by the in July, you're they're kind of established, pretty established on where they're going to be wallow wise. It's like I feel okay. You know? um, so yeah, I'm going to do that, and then definitely going to do. Man, this bear season was awesome in the tree saddle. Yeah, um, we've we've avoided the uh, final outcome of that talk so far. <laughs> for which part? The how, how it turned out for for you? Oh my! Th yeah, my bear season. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I could have shot a bear. Yeah, no doubt at all. But right. I mean, I was being picky. I had a couple target bears that, um, and it didn't happen. But I had it was fun. It's the first time in, in um, quite a few years that I decided to kind of solo bear, you know, bait by myself. And mm -hmm. and it was relaxing. I didn't feel, not that I really felt under pressure before or anything, but it's like, I'll do it when I want. Right. You know, That's whatever. That's true. Yeah. And, and I ended up just, uh, just just pretty much concentrating on one bait site mm -hmm. instead of multiple. Right. Like I initially planned, mm -hmm. um, but I was getting enough action on the one that I figured, 
why waste energy on others? And I don't know. I It was so hard to tell. So I have an older trail camera, which, moment of silence, I'm retiring. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, it screwed me up this year because yeah. I, I really inconsistent trail camera pictures and and the card on the bottom, you know, the highlighted card or the highlighted picture that it shows it's going to display yeah. was nighttime, but the actual picture it was displaying was daytime. That's weird. Yeah, it was all, it was all messed up. Yeah. And I don't know if it had anything to do with, and, and I decided after this year, mm-hmm. I'm getting all new SD cards. I don't know if it was an issue, maybe old cards. I don't know. Right. But I'm not going to take a chance. And then I have some new cameras, but I hadn't got bear boxes for them because I figured this one would work still. Right. But it didn't. Yeah. The, you know, I had a, a sow with a couple cubs that came in several times. Never, ever got them on trail camera. And they were there a lot. I've got and footage you, of them. Yeah, you were there when they yeah, were there. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I always leave my. Usually, what I'll do is when I get to the stand, I'll take my card out mm-hmm. and um, take it up in the tree. I put a new card in and run it. You know, let it run. Because I always hope if I do shoot, I get that shot where yes. it's hitting the animal or something. Yeah. You see people have those. Yeah. You know? So I leave it running. And man, those. That one day I got a, a film and and we'll probably put up do do something with that because I've yes. got some pretty cool footage. But yeah, for sure. I threw my um, hat <laughs> to scare him. <laughs> I threw my piss bottle. That didn't work. <laughs> um, I actually threw uh, my because I didn't, I was barely in the stand. Um, I took my tree saddle off. <laughs> this is dumb. And threw it at him and my scent spray to get him to leave because what I was worried about was getting out of the stand and having mom come down there. But yeah. if I feel like if there's a uh, – maybe that was a dumb thing to do. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> it didn't phase him whatsoever. Right. That was a thing. I finally just got out of my stand and, and they climbed the tree and gathered all my stuff and thought, yeah, I'll never do that again. So I put my tree saddle back on, <laughs> get back up in the tree and – Finally, they let. Oh, I put a bunch of sticks inside the hole because these bears were small enough they'd climb in the hole. That's and funny. Their mom, when she come in with them, she wasn't with them that day. Hmm. Um, she'd be up the hill making noise, and they couldn't hear because they're both inside the barrel, clinking around yeah, inside there. Yeah, they'd stick their head out, and you know she'd be up there woofing and puffing and yeah. pissed off, and and so this time. With all the sticks in there, they got frustrated. They even got in a little fight. I know it was out of frustration because they couldn't get in there. Uh, and and then they, they they ended up leaving after after that. But yeah. I, I, fe- I feel a lot of times, you know, I'm not a bear expert, but they say if there's a sow of cubs coming in that's in there, that a bigger boar is not going to come in because really? they're afraid of the – Oh. It's a woman with oh. her kids. Oh. Yeah, the old mama bear thing. That. Okay. So that's what, it's not that I don't mind feeding them because I know they're going to come back and eat. Sure, it's just I'd rather not there than be there when I right, there. Right, right. And as it turned out that night, okay, I messed up, and um, I didn't check my. Um, I, usually, when when filming lights out, I quit. Mm-hmm. Okay, even though they're still shooting lights. Yes, available. And so. Yeah. I didn't realize how late it went, though. Mm-hmm. So this particular night, I'm thinking I had literally a couple minutes. And it was probably only a couple minutes of shooting light left. I mean, filming light. And But realistically, I had like 17 minutes of legal shooting time. Gotcha. Which I could kill one still. Mm-hmm. But I, I really wanted to get it on film. Sure. Anyway, I stood up. Or I moved, I should say, in the saddle. And the boar was coming in that I wanted. How far out was he? Close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it scared the shit out of me because I'm like, all of a sudden, you know, I move and I start getting something ready. And I made a little bit of noise. I think I grabbed my quiver to put it on. And it was like, <laughs> oh, he took off. Man. And I'm like, oh, and I got a glimpse of him. I'm like, there he was, you oh, know. And, no. and I ain't going to lie. It had been one of those things, though. 
it was getting close to the end of the season because this is just a few nights ago. Yeah. Um, I would have shot it off film if I could have right. had a chance. I would oh, have yeah. So then the next day, I check um, when realistically, when shooting uh, legal shooting time was. And like I said, I had 15, 17 minutes. And it, it, the, the last day I sat, a couple nights ago, um, legal shooting light was 957. Wow. Isn't that insane? It, it's insane, yeah. And that is crazy. So I sat there that late. And there again, you know, I could have, um, I was prepared for him to show up late, hopefully. Right. You know, he didn't. Right. Um, I had two other, I had a really pretty blonde bear, but just smaller. Mm-hmm. And then I had another small black bear. I wasn't even in my stand yet. I wasn't even settled yet. I was just barely climbed the tree. Yeah. I was getting everything hooked up and bow, I hadn't even pulled my bow up yet. And this black bear, uh, smaller black bear come kind of bouncing down the hill and... And so I had a little chat with it. I scared him <laughs> off. I did get that on film too. But yeah, I do a lot. It sounds like from what we talk, I, I talk to my bears a that lot is, more you, than you do. You do, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't have any bears to talk to this year, so I, yeah. I didn't give. give <laughs> didn't and get kudos a chance to everyone to talk out there who slammed them because oh, this man, was a great some, year it was. for bears. Holy cow! It's hunting, man. I yeah. mean, and, and and this is definitely proof that you don't throw a jelly donut out. <laughs> For bait and just kill a bear, you right. know every bear. That's very true. For for the people that think it's easy and right. all that, a lot of work, you know. Oh man, I put in a pile of work this you year. You do, and yeah, and, more than normal because I usually only run one bait myself. That's true. And and this year I, we ran, I ran the two because yeah. we wanted to have that rifle sight and yeah. stuff. And yeah, I don't know, but yeah. whatever. It, I mean, it was. I did enjoy it, and I even yeah. though I didn't kill one, I'm not because I could have. If, if I was just, you, you I gotta kill a bear. Right. I could have killed a bear. I'd have shot that blonde one. Yeah. I mean, just because the it's color is beautiful. It's a cool looking bear. Yeah. 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 And had plenty of opportunities. It's got got his head stuck in the hole a couple of times, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, for a person that just right wanted to shoot a bear. Oh yeah. I mean, it would have been a super good bear for like a kid to, to shoot. It would have been awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't but nothing against anyone that shot, you know, smaller bears or yeah. anything. I just cuz I don't know. I mean, I guess um I got plenty of meat still. Right. So, I wasn't like I got to have the meat. Exactly. And uh but it's just enjoyable and relaxing to be out there and, yep. and saw some cool things. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Yeah, on to the next, on to the next animal, I guess. Exactly. Uh, I had a couple questions for you about the when you set trail cams for it. So we talked about putting them in. I, we always, both of us, always put them in boxes for bears. It makes a lot of sense. Do you do that, like when you set them elsewhere for like elk and stuff like that? I'm going that? to just and for the two reasons. Theft. Theft. Yep, that's what I was curious about. And um, and you never know if, they, if there's a wall there. There's bears get on the wallows too that's true I hadn't thought about so that so i did what i did do is one night i thought okay because that camera wasn't performing well you know right i thought i'm gonna put another one of my other uh, uh trail cameras up and i put it basically sat it on top of the box and it's just got a strap okay yeah i'm gonna use uh and I, i've seen it before i never have used because mine is kind of more older school mm-hmm. um, you screw it into the tree with small screws and that's how it stays on right but those cables the ones you cable the yeah. box and you can still and I, I honestly had shied away from the cables in the past because i thought you had to take the cable off and everything to get to the camera i didn't realize you're just basically cabling the box and right. then you still put a lock on it yeah till i used a buddy of mine a couple of years ago we baited and and so it's pretty cool gig mm-hmm. um but so I put this camera on top of my camera box with no not being protected. Right. And I know it was a gamble. Right. And sure shit, man. It was swung around the side of the tree. Yeah, of and it was all licked up <laughs> and everything. So I I took it off that next day. Went, that's yeah, hilarious. that's that's not gonna work right. too well. Right. And in fact, because of the angle, I got one picture of a bear running off, and I don't know if that's the thing is oh. I, I, something scared it off and i don't know if it was another bear yeah and it could have been brutus or whatever that or whatever i didn't name my bears right. but i mean it could have been something <laughs> big but my other camera wasn't working right so never did get it right that's funny yeah next year will be a better i know there's always next year but i mean i yeah it'll be fine it'll be fine 
yeah. I, I'm hoping my area will be fine. Next year? Yeah. Are you a little concerned about that other bait? No. Thing? No. I No. It's just, just getting so busy with people up there. Oh. Later in the year. So we talked about this last podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah you're going to maybe hunt earlier, hunt earlier this year. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to consider I, it. You know, I, I'm <clears throat> kind of a firm believer that when the opportunity is there and they're coming in, you, you need to do just it do now. it. I, the bad thing, like I know with your job situation too, is that it's not like you can say, hey, I'm taking off. Right. Tomorrow. Exactly. Because I got a bear coming in. <laughs> yeah. Got more important things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Than work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Well, it'll still be good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'm not I'm not too worried about it, but we'll see. Um reiterating just a little bit on the trophy line uh tree saddle. I mean I I was so impressed how comfortable they were and, and how easy they were and how versatile they were in right. the tree. And, I was super and, nervous about, I won't say nervous, but when you un, first get unsure it? about how to use them oh. properly. And of course, and I would suggest this for anyone, if you it's your first time using them, I, I literally at home, I cut limbs off of some trees I had here and practiced and in fact, I shot out of, out of that tree only like a foot off the ground. Yeah, just so I got oh, more you comfortable need to. with it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I was like, wow, this is actually super cool. Oh man, yeah. and I felt so um, secure in there. I yeah. wasn't, you know, like when you first get in it, and but once you learn learn how to use the ropes and yeah. everything, how you can slide them up. Man, those things are super cool. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I felt Slick. super, super. Um, Secure in there, and I easy to adjust. Easy to adjust. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, the material was quiet. Mm -hmm. Everything was super quiet. Yes. One thing I did move my platform about a foot, and just because of of the angle for the, because um, I didn't want to have to really move side to side much for the shot. Exactly. You know, I'm like you do too. I move a little bit to look around the tree and a mm -hmm. little bit. You know. Yeah. But anyway, um, when I moved the platform, it was only like I said, maybe, not, maybe not even a foot. Yeah. Um, I didn't draw my bow back from that yeah. until I got in the tree. Okay. And boom, yeah, I had a a, a a limb coming out, just a tiny limb. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, luckily, like a Boy Scout, I have my saw. <laughs> <laughs> So I'd reach down to my pack and get my saw out. Right. But, but anyway, you know, here again, being new and everything, it's just you learn those things. Yeah. Um, so just something that you make sure you draw the bow back. Because, exactly. And I did practice mine. Uh, I had to just break some little stuff off yeah. to make it work for me. So it was, yeah. I was worried about because I was sitting, same tree I've always sat in on that site. But, you know, in a tree stand, I, you sit in a totally different spot. Yeah. But I had this perfect pocket of uh um limbs and stuff it's just like a hole in the tree it's just crazy but so anyway i was more off to the side of the tree and i thought well shoot those are going to be in my way but no it they was, weren't it, no just Good. some small stuff you know i needed to break mm -hmm. some stuff so i wasn't hitting my limb on you know some of the branches that were hanging a little too low and then behind me there were some dead ones that were really small but i would hit those so i just snapped those off yeah. with my hands it was yeah. not a big deal at all this one was one of those I could have priced here again. I'm like, if I um, if I snap it, is it um, gonna break? Yeah. Or I mean, uh, like me move too much or whatever. Uh oh. You know, area insecurity in the oh, thing. Oh, right. But uh, yeah, once you're in in those, you those realize saddles, that it's yeah, not... you realize I could have done it, but it you know it's probably that big around. It okay. wasn't like. I'd have to lean out to snap it though. It's hard to snap. It was close. It was close enough to the tree. You know, the little harder. Yeah, to. exactly. So, anyway, it uh, um, it worked out. I got the saw out and got it done because yeah. there again, movement wise, you know, you want to make sure you're not making too much movement. And I could have drawn it back, but I'd have had to move a lot. Yeah. And this stand is first year I, I hunted that spot. Um, was actually um, 20 yards, right at 20 yards, which I like it a little farther. Right. Glitch. Glitch. Big glitch. So, um, yeah, I, this morning I had everything packed in the bag. 
with the camera, with our third camera. Right. And um, forgot it. <laughs> Weird. So... Does that come just with being seasoned? Anyway, huh? Does that come with being seasoned? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forgetting things. <laughs> Dementia or whatever. Right. Yeah, no. uh, oh, yeah I, was kinda, I was in a hurry. Imagine that. Right. Weird. <laughs> so anyway, our battery just died on one of the cameras because we didn't have our, our plug-in for yeah. the wall. That's all right. So those are the little cut. We hate when we have to cut, but sometimes you do. It happens. Yeah. We're not professionals. No. <laughs> No means anyway, no. what were we talking about? I don't know, something about bear hunting. I yeah. <laughs> wrapping it up. I mean, wrapping up bear season. and We were. And, yeah, the trophy line. I mean, we're, we've, we we uh, super happy with everything this year so far. Me yeah. too. Yeah. But I like the idea of using them for elk hunting too. That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, uh, not that I mind. I've... Ran plenty up to hitting down the hills, chasing the elk and everything. But I, I just feel like when you get a drier year, water is obviously a good source. Absolutely. And and uh, I feel like it can be you you know utilized and and I know plenty of people that hunt out of tree stands. For I just never have done it. Right. Never. I never. Yeah. Me either. I don't think I've ever even sat by a wallow in the past, you know, waiting, mm -hmm. even for any short time. But I just know it's effective. It yeah. could be effective. And so so many people feel like you got to do the classic call them in yeah. and the guy stand behind 80 yards and right. blah, 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 you know. And that isn't the case when that's, it comes to killing elk that's the youtube way <laughs> yeah that pretty much is that's the way yeah the video the yeah right. the tv stuff is Ex always like that exactly and, and yeah I, I mean when i say i'm an opportunist sometimes it requires calling sometimes it requires keeping your mouth shut that's true um sometimes just cutting them off and i mean we're talking about killing elk we're not talking about you yep. know hollywood exactly right <laughs> So, a couple of cool things we do have coming up, though, uh, super excited about is uh, we had partnered up already with uh, Nada by Carlton. Yes. And so, we got seasoned hunter elk calls with our logo on them coming here pretty soon. Yeah, so, I, can't wait to, I can't wait to get that. Yeah, they should get be those here back. pretty soon. Yeah. 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 So, super excited about that. And, yeah. and Everly Stock's going to be doing some stuff with us, too. And, mm -hmm. um Loving all their products that we've been using. Yeah. Well, we've talked about them a bit in the past, yeah. but yeah, their packs are awesome. Yeah. So, for sure. Yeah. And then I guess we're going to, you going to use Light Knox Mechanicals? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not going to. If I were to use either one, it would be the Light Knox just for the video aspect of the whole thing. Yeah. But, uh, me yeah. too. That'd I, probably I, be it. But like you said before, it'll change your front of center probably the weight i don't know but i think i don't know i'm obviously a lot of people use them so they're fine but. yeah well it just might have to change i ain't gonna lie dude i don't know i i don't feel like my setup shooting super good right now oh, and i don't true. know if i want to mess with retuning and everything it's not that i'm lazy or anything like that i've done that plenty of times but um it's shooting so good it's yeah. like i don't know if i really want to mess with well here's the thing too like you think oh i got all summer to readjust and stuff and yeah. man it is gone so fast because yeah. there's so much stuff going We're in on july. during the summer right exactly I mean, in july and we got two months yeah i know Yay. which is exciting <laughs> it is yeah yeah that's so, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to keep my setup, at least for this year. Yeah, I don't think I'm I actually, anything. I actually, ain't going to lie, I did think about possibly for antelope using the mechanicals. Cause I, but then I'm thinking, elk season's right there, too. That's true. And it's the so, exact same time. Yeah. And so, I do I want to mess with... That's a good point. With... Because uh, I, 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 I'm not sold on them. Right. That's my personal opinion. And you don't want to... And we wouldn't want to... Have to retune crap. In right. There. Right in the middle. Why? And you don't want to shoot elk. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to shoot an elk with a uh, mechanical. Yeah, I said I'm not sold on it yet. But I know people do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nothing against people that do. It's us being 
nervous about trying something new yeah. maybe i don't know yeah maybe that's what it is but I mean, if it ain't broke don't fix it that's, that's how exactly I see it. kind of the way i look at it. and besides i got a pile of broadheads uh, yeah 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 that's true too that's yeah, another I really want to go spin a whole bunch of my i do right. have some lighted knocks i've had for years i don't know if they work right um if i even wanted to try those but. it would be that i do they would be fun like i would be all about the light and knock i think yeah just just because of the i mean for me it would be just because of the you know the filming aspect of it and it'd be cool footage but there's other advantages to them too yeah you know yeah i was talking seeing to, where you hit the animal and that kind of stuff which is yeah i was talking to a buddy yesterday who um um faithful watcher yeah good yeah skip and uh he he's he has to shoot a crossbow just because he's he's had some injuries and stuff mm -hmm. and i mean he's shooting like gosh what is it like 400 feet per second, something just ridiculous. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got great kinetic energy mm -hmm. because his speed, you know. Mm -hmm. There's such a fine line there with that kinetic energy thing with if you shoot high pounds and a light arrow, you can get some good kinetic energy. But if you shoot some low pounds and a light arrow, obviously you lose a bunch. And right. That's where I think the mechanical thing. Point is, with his kinetic energy he's got, he's a perfect candidate to shoot expandables but he don't want to mess with i hear you with you know he said the lighted knocks though mm -hmm. would be a good thing for him because because of the speed he blows through critters and he most every time loses them gotcha, and you know really? they're, they're short yeah so um you penetrate it doesn't take as much to lose it underneath the grass not sticking out as far I or hear whatever you. yeah exactly so the lighted knocks i think is going to be um a good thing for him mm -hmm. you know hmm. and uh i don't know yeah i guess we'll see how it goes we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll see exactly i might throw one on just to try it yeah to, i would to, if you have them already might as well try see how bad it's gonna <laughs> well yeah who knows and maybe it won't be a drastic difference in the how your arrow flies or whatever yeah i'm not gonna say i'm i'm probably gonna not shoot them for like i said everything's shooting so well right yeah, now but exactly guess we'll see good cool anyway next time i know we'll talk about some gear and it's plan that's the plan yeah yeah start gearing up talking about what we're going to use for um elk and antelope and further down the line the muzzleloader deer hunt yeah what are you going to do for deer by the way um hunt I don't know. I haven't really I haven't uh, thought about it much, huh? No, because I didn't put in for um, you know any unlimited tags. Yeah, um, that's the beauty about Idaho, though. There's still, we still have some general tags that yeah. just go over the counter. So, and, and I mean, yeah, I, I there's plenty of open hunts to go on. I'm not gonna lie that I, some of these late hunts, I kind of enjoy those late hunts. The late deer hunts? Uh, yeah, the late archery deer oh, hunts. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. So we'll talk about Was that. Was that one you usually draw? Isn't that an unlimited tag? Yeah, I have put in. I, I hunted an unlimited area for a lot of years, but uh, the pressure out there has gotten. Oh. And the, honestly, mm -hmm. the um, ethics of not staying on roads with. Nothing against side-by-sides, four-wheelers or anything, or pickups, because that's a lot of times guys just it's drive true. with pickups cross-country. That's and, true. Oh, it's just, it's frustrating. Yeah. You know, it's so frustrating. So, I kind of have canned that, hunting that unit. I see. And and I just got a regular deer tag. But, okay. you know, where I live is a short-range weapon area down there. And, oh, so is that an over-the-counter tag? Yeah. Oh. I think it gets starts early in August. Probably. Yeah, I think you're right. It goes into November. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. But there's been a couple other late archery hunts that, you know, that I, um, I've i enjoyed. Yeah. And I'm going to probably do a little more this year. Oh, gotcha. I hear you. Last yeah, year yeah, I yeah. went one day was all. Is that it? And and i so close to getting a shot at a buck. I mean, and I only had one day. I put a stock on one buck, and, and he ended up coming out. He was below me. He ended up coming out to my left and just a little above me mm -hmm. by the time i realized that it was getting later in the evening but by the time i realized that 
um, I thought he was still better below me. Mm-hmm. I was just sneaking my way down in there. But gotcha. Anyway. Super cool. But it's a fun hunt. Yeah. And they're rutting that time of year, too. Yeah. So our next hunt will be antelope. And, yeah, we can talk about and our blind elk setups. Elk, and elk starts before that. But yeah. That's true. I probably won't get, well. We'll see. Yeah. It's really close to the same, so yeah. it's hard to fit all that stuff in the same time. I know. I know. That's, you know, I mean, for years, I know I've talked about it. I've only usually put in, even on the videos, I've only put uh, a little bit of time in the antelope because it's during elk season. Right. And it's like, uh, but it's so fun. It is. And the meat's good. Yeah, I love it. Oh, man, we ate some antelope backstrap for dinner the other night. Did I, you? Probably was my last package. Yeah. I, I haven't dug around, but I was surprised to find that one. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day. They were telling me how nasty antelope is. I'm like, yeah. you just haven't had it prepared right. Yeah, it's, you're, not, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's the best meat on earth. It's it's awesome. In my opinion. And I love my elk. And, and of course, moose is really good, too. Yeah. But mm, antelope, man, there's just something about it. I don't it's know. Good. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right, buddy. Okay. Let's wrap this one up. Yes, sir. And thanks, for everyone, for watching. And yeah, appreciate it. Absolutely our uh mess ups and yeah we're gonna throw together just a little prop well probably throw together a little video of some of the bears daryl filmed oh yeah we we won't use any of the bears i filmed so we're in any (laughs) but anyway yeah just to show yeah 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 just so we were out there i guess <laughs> prove that we were out then we actually exactly. did bait <laughs> we actually don't really know what we're doing but we try yeah <laughs> sometimes it works out this, the new uh the new series is going to be called the season unsuccessful right <laughs> yeah no it's still fun yeah cool all right man, all right, man. catch you later okay see ya okay bye